Uh, are these all the script changes, Nancy? That's all. All right, listen, we only got three minutes to air, Dan. <laughs> settle down, settle down. This is it. This is the moment we've been waiting for, working towards all these past months. Yes. Listen, we know you're great, ABC knows you're great, and by the time the show is over, the audience will know you're great. Yeah. 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 It's just one thing. Because of the kind of show we are, and because of the kind of cast you are, and because we are a live, late-night comedy show, and because you are basically unknown performers, some critics and some viewers are going to say, despite the fact that we're not, that we're imitating Saturday Night Live. Oh, no, oh, why don't they so so <laughs> do they appreciate how much effort we've gone so we can be different? I couldn't agree with you more, man, but we've got to believe that the audience will find us. Okay, but right now we have some script changers. Okay. The stockbroker's guy. Yeah. Daryl. Yeah. yeah, Bill. Listen, you're no longer the southern sharecropper. You're going to play the part of the Oxford oil millionaire. All right. Hey, you knucklehead. Does that affect my speech on page 12 or what? Now, no, get no, out of here. The speech here. stays the same, but you have to deliver it from a motorized wheelchair. Uh, Bruce, your lines on 6, 8, 16, 25, and 48 are all cut. Instead, you'll take Mary Edith's lines on page 12 and 33. Should I just do them the way she did them? Uh, no, no. Uh, deliver them in Mandarin Chinese. If you speak in Chinese, then my lines as the Surgeon General will have to be changed. No. No, you're not the Surgeon General anymore. Instead, in all the lines meant for the Surgeon General, play them as, uh, as Hans Holbein the Younger. Mark, the pilot sketch is being changed a little bit. Okay, Bill. Instead of the bloodthirsty pirate captain, you're going to play the part of the president of a small Midwestern Bible town. Okay. Well, wait, do I still cut out Melanie's tongue? Right, that doesn't change, except now she's the chairman of the Board of Standard Oil. Okay. Brandis. Yeah, Bill. Look, is there anything you can do to stretch the marriage council sketch? Uh, yeah, well, I can recite from Boswell's Life of Samuel Johnson. Perfect, perfect. Something from his later years. Okay. John, William F. Buckley piece isn't working. Oh. Mary Edith and I could be Vikings in a sex counselor's office. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. well, B.B. finds something in the way of Viking costumes. Okay. Yeah. Aren't you got all that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Good show, guys. Yeah, yeah. 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 Bill, just, just one thing, please. Um, do I have to wear the maid's outfit? Hey, Daryl, if it's good enough for Garrett Morris, it's good enough for you. <laughs> Uh, this, uh, this guy, uh... <laughs> you heard it before? <laughs> uh, uh, this guy, uh, 
went into an antique store and said, uh, what's new? <laughs> Knock, knock. Here's a, the first sketch. Honey, do you think everything looks all right? I'm here. Honey, I wish you would hurry. The letter says five-ish, and it's already five-ish. Well, I'll be there. You know, honey, I think our little girl's really in love. Every time she wrote his name, it was K-E-N with big letters. Harry, I wish you would hurry. You're making me nervous. <laughs> Besides, I need that National Geographic for the table. Honey, relax. The blue people eating bugs. And you're worrying about our daughter's new boyfriend. Everything's gonna be fine. Well... There they are. Hi, Princess. Hi, Dad. <laughs> Hi, honey. Mom. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Mom, Dad, this is Ken. <laughs> Hi, Ken. How do you do, Ken? How are you? <laughs> Sarah's talked about you both so much. <laughs> I feel like I already know you. <laughs> it's a real pleasure. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> Excuse me, could I use your bathroom? Uh, I'd like to like to freshen up a bit. Sure, Ken. Right through the door. Huh? All right. <laughs> Well, Mom, Dad, what do you think, huh? Oh, well, he seems nice. Well, it's just, uh, only... Just what, Dad? Well, it's, uh, you didn't tell us that your Ken was a monster. I didn't? No. I think one of us would have remembered. That's right, I would have remembered. There's no monster. <laughs> Boy, I love the bathroom wallpaper. <laughs> Especially the naked mermaid. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. Yeah. Uh, listen, uh, can I get you kids a drink or something? No, 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 nothing for me, thanks. One drink, I can hardly walk. Yeah. <laughs> and get to know one another, huh? Okay. <laughs> well, Ken, how about those Dodgers, huh? <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, I don't really follow sports that much. Yeah. <laughs> If you know what I mean. So, Ken, what do you do? Oh, uh, I'm a, I'm a mime. <laughs> a mime? Yeah, Ken's a mime, Mom. That's <laughs> Union Square in San Francisco? <laughs> well, isn't that nice? Oh, Ken, 
I got a great idea. Why don't you do that mime routine you did in the park? <laughs> what, here? Sure, Mom and Dad would love to see it, wouldn't you, Mom and Dad? Uh, oh. I... oh, come on, please. Where? Well, if you're gonna twist my arm. <laughs> He's the greatest. Go <laughs> something for like that. <laughs> Use your bathroom again. Uh, I was getting excited after a performance. Sure. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Mom, Dad, I can see you're a little disappointed. Well, honey, it's just that we've never had a cross eyed hunchback monster mime in the family before. <laughs> in the family? <laughs> married we're just good friends Ken's gay you mean you mean you two aren't you <laughs> you mean that Ken's a funny boy huh? I prefer to be called gay sir even though I've been made fun of because of it all my life, sir. Well, you won't have to worry about that sort of thing in this household, Ken. <laughs> That's right. We are very liberal. You know, Ken, you're a hell of a mind. Oh, look, why don't we go out and celebrate, huh? All right, I was born to boogie. Come on! <laughs> This is the Friday edition with your correspondent, Melanie Chardoff. Good evening, I'm Melanie Chardoff, and these are tonight's top stories. In his hardest-hitting speech since the prolonged international crisis began, President Carter threatened direct military intervention, saying he would use the Marines, the Air Force, the Navy if necessary, and he did not rule out the usage of nuclear force. He added, if this doesn't show the Olympic Committee I mean business, nothing will. <laughs> Critics claim that the president's tough new stand is part of a campaign strategy designed to counter his image as a weak leader. As evidence, they point to the fact that in future weeks, Carter plans to blockade Iran, deliver an ultimatum to the Soviet Union, and make Rosalind feel like a real woman. <laughs> in related news, the Shah of Iran is resting comfortably in Cairo following removal last week of his cancerous spleen by Dr. Michael DeBakey of Houston, Texas. As an expression of his country's gratitude for the success of the operation, President Sadat had the Shah's spleen bronzed and is shown here presenting it to Dr. DeBakey. <laughs> In Washington this week, a report released by the National Drug Abuse Council stated that more Americans than ever are using illegal drugs. <laughs> yes. The report went on to state that this trend is not likely to be halted by law enforcement activity. However, police activities to control the spread of illegal drugs continue at the highest levels. Here we see Miss Lillian Carter being led away after her arrest for selling five ounces of marijuana to an undercover police officer. A Santa Fe, New Mexico woman who played to 30 cups of coffee per day during her pregnancy, yesterday gave birth to an unusually deformed child. 
The eight pound, six ounce baby boy named Mr. Coffee is doing remarkably well, although doctors feel the child may have been born a caffeine junkie. Now, on Monday night, all eyes will be directed at Hollywood for the 52nd Annual Academy Awards presentation. As a prelude to the awards, we take you now to Michael's Pub in New York for an interview with Woody Allen. Good evening, Woody. Welcome to the Friday edition. Thank you. I, I'm honored to be your guest. <laughs> Woody, what was your reaction when Manhattan wasn't nominated for Best Picture and you were overlooked for both Best Director and Best Actor? I was shocked. You know, I was really mortified. You know, I, I... But, Woody, uh, you, you've always expressed great disdain toward the concept of artists competing for Oscars. Well, that was just an excuse. You know, my, my real reason was that I could not bring myself to fondle the statue of a naked man on live television. It's against my mores. I could not do it. Oh, but my, my, my analyst told me that being neurotic should not stand in the way of a, a true artist. It, it didn't stop Kafka or Nietzsche or Christy McNichol. Well, any Woody, of <laughs> at least you and Marshall Brickman are nominated for Best Original Screenplay. <laughs> Brickman wrote most of it. I typed it. Jeez, I was, I was all set to go, you know. I, I rented a tux. I even had a date. This, this is really going to kill the girl. She, she already bought a dress. <laughs> it's the same one she's wearing to the prom. Uh, Woody, I'm afraid we're running out of time, but... Uh... I've, I even had my speech ready. I would like to thank my manager, my producer, and especially of all my, my idol, St. Thomas Aquinas, one of the uh... really really great wits of the 13th century. Yes, yes, Woody. Well, I, I want to thank you. We have to Tension go. Thank you for again. I may need a hysterectomy. I don't edition. know what it is. Thank I'm you. getting anxious, and I, I can't see what's happening. Now, in sports, George Steinbrenner, owner of the New York Yankees, said he is not worried about the impending players' strike. Steinbrenner plans to buy all the people living in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> in other sporting news, welterweight boxing champion Pepino Cuevas retained his title by knocking out challenger Harold Valbrecht in the fifth round. Here, the referee sings Mammy to a defeated Valbrecht. <laughs> Now, the following story is one that we've been covering for quite some time. We'd like to warn you that some of the following scenes might prove too explicit for some of our younger viewers. For this report, we take you now to our coastline and Mary Edith Burrell. This is the peaceful, serene seaside village of Henson, California. Population 349. Henson is located just 14 miles north of Los Angeles and is thought by many to be the most peace-loving town in Southern California. That is, until the second week of April. Each year at this time, this God-fearing village becomes a veritable hotbed of controversy. It is here on this mile-long stretch of beach that a devastating example of man's inhumanity takes place. I am, of course, referring to the annual Muppet Hunt. The senseless feeding of such favorites as Bert, Ernie, Kermit, all for the selfish, self-perpetuating business of selling their skins to money-grabbing furriers just so that fashion-conscious socialites may be seen wearing the latest in Muppet creations. This heartless display does not go unnoticed by the townspeople here. They rally, they protest, they even try to stop these untamed, unrelenting brutes from completing their torturous task but to no avail. The question we all ask ourselves is a simple one. Who would be sick enough to purchase and wear a coat that was once a television personality? I'm here on Rodale Drive in Beverly Hills, purportedly the richest street in the world. Beyond this storefront lies a site not for the squeamish. In here, some of the most exotic pieces of apparel, all made from dead Muppets, are on sale. It's hard to believe that these used to be the cute and cuddly characters we grew up with. As one patron sadly, yet poetically phrased it, they once warmed hearts, they'll now warm entire bodies. There is no way to comprehend this sadistic, brutal handling of living things. Someday, hopefully soon, Man will come to realize that all of God's creatures are precious and were put on this earth for more than just his own entertainment. From Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills, this is Mary Edith Burrell reporting.
Please join us next week when we continue our profile of presidential candidates as Ronald Reagan discusses his sex life. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm Melanie Chardoff. Have a pleasant weekend. This has been the Friday edition with your correspondent, Melanie Chardoff. Peter? Frank! Good to see you. Peter, how are you? Great, I couldn't feel better. <laughs> hey, what do you drink? Uh, gin and tonic straight up. Bartender, gin and tonic straight up for my friend, and I'll have a vodka and seven. So, <laughs> long time no see. What can I say? Guys like us, two old friends, you know, there's just no excuse. I'll say. You gotta work at a friendship, no? It takes work. Hey, to more and better times in the future, okay? Bottoms up. Listen, I heard about your wife. Please. I'm really sorry, Frank. Uh, you two were a great couple. How'd you hear about it? I was all over the papers. Look, the girl was really sick. Anybody who'd push her head through a drill press like that. You haven't got to say anything, Peter. She's dead. I. I loved her, and now she's dead, that's all. Can I freshen that for you? Please. Bartender, do it again, please. Two more, and uh, keep them coming. So I heard you and Margaret were having big problems, too. It's over, Frank. She wants the separation, and I'm giving it to her. That's the long and the short of it. Really too bad, man. Uh... Peter, look. Nobody said sexual problems were easy, but they're a big part of marriage. I can't satisfy that woman, Frank. Look, you're not gonna solve it by talking about it at this point. What you two need is therapy. Oh, come on, Frank. Work it out with a pro and... and... And I mean a shrink. Come on, Frank. It's her problem, and that's where it lies. I've done everything I can. Mirrored ceilings, marital aids, the works. It's just over. Write it off. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I know you're in pain. No big deal. It's getting late. Mm. Almost five. I got to catch the bank. Hey, good luck, and whatever happens, let's be in touch more, huh? OK, see you later. Take it slow. Watch the dragon. Hey, next time, let's make it light. Now, here is Kenny Loggins.
comes a moment when it's clear there's only one no one ever you need of me i have made up my mind i'll give you more than you ask for and there are those who can't foresee where we will go but all the future i don't want to know only that you'll be here with me while the embers still glow we'll be safe to tomorrow so See those guys? That used to be me. No job, no ambition, nothing to give my life a sense of purpose or accomplishment. That's not me no more. You see, I stopped hanging out and I started helping out when I became a Vista volunteer. I did not know it before, but there was people in my community who needed the type of help that I could provide. And they live in your community, too, in places like this. <laughs> That's right. Throughout the country, there are wealthy families who need the help of the underprivileged. And that's why VISTA was formed. Volunteers in service to affluent Hawkins. Imagine the satisfaction you can get adjusting the thermostat on a hot tub. <laughs> Refilling martini glasses. It wasn't and what could be more rewarding than the gleam in a young boy's eye when taking off in his first Mercedes? 
Want to know more about how you can help? Write Vista, Washington, D.C. <laughs> Vista, volunteers in service to affluent honkies, minorities serving white people the way God intended it to be. He needs it. You're sure? He needs it. You're quite sure? He needs it. I want it. Very well, but I'll have to get the supervisor. What is it? He needs it. I want it. He needs it. He needs it. Well. He needs it. He needs it. I want it. Best the keyboard man in the business. Relax, Lieutenant, you're gonna be fine. Stenson retractor. Very slowly now, wire cutter. I have the army cap now. Tempura Tom. Tempura Tom. Oh my god! Get the people out of here! Cody, Brett, and Steve race against time to remove a bomb from a policewoman tomorrow night on Police Gynecologist. That's Peavis, P-E-A-V-I. Dr. Fleming, what can I do for you? Uh, well, you see, I've never previously consulted a plastic surgeon before, and my reasons for doing so at this particular juncture in my life requires a bit of background and explanation. You see, for a number of years now, and despite my best efforts to the contrary, I have had the nagging feeling that people do not listen to me. I would Mildred, I would did I tell you to get Russian dressing on the sandwich? That's what I ordered. Didn't but they I also put that feel on. No, they didn't the put that on. Which I'm sorry. I'll remind them next time. And yeah, you do that. And I've come to think in recent years that this but, might bear some relationship to my outward physical appearance. I came to the conclusion 
that in a town... Bill, don't want to be a brisk on onion, will you? All right, all yeah. beautiful people, I stand very little chance of making a positive impression. I saw no hope of resolving this problem until I happened to cross a magazine article about how you were using your talents to make people look like celebrities. So what I've come here today to ask is, can you make me look like a celebrity? Huh? Can you make me look like a celebrity? Ah, big job. Big, big, big job. <laughs> well, who did you have in mind? I want to look like Howdy Doody. <laughs> Are you crazy? I want to look like Howdy Doody! Do you think you can handle the responsibility? <laughs> you young fits today make me sick! Why, you don't know the first thing about being Howdy Doody. You know what it's like to have strangers staring at you? Have you ever eaten lunch with a William Morris agent? Have you ever been mobbed by a horde of five-year-olds screaming for your autograph? What are you going to do when they say, Be funny, Mr. Duty. Where's Clarabelle, Mr. Duty. Where's Princess Summer Fall Winter Spring, Mr. Duty. And you can't produce them. Then what are you going to do, Mr. Bipshot Duty? I'm not going to have the pseudo duty on my conscience. <laughs> but I can pay cash. Mildred, bring in the appointment book. Good morning, Mr. Duty. How are you, Mr. Duty? You look terrific, Mr. Duty. What floor, Mr. Duty? I, I am sorry, there are no tables. But we had a reservation. It, it is impossible. There is nothing I can do. Ah, bonsoir, Monsieur Duty. Ah, comment allez-vous, Monsieur Duty? Would you like a table, Monsieur Duty? Right this way, Monsieur. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on over here? He paid me five dollars that he can keep his head in the butt pool for sixty. <laughs> Well, not in my house, he doesn't. You know how much money it costs you to rent that bull? Get your head. What do you think you're doing? Oh, Mr. Duty. I didn't know it was you, Mr. Duty. Go ahead and vote, Mr. Duty. It's okay, everybody. It's just howdy doody dunking. Go back to what you're doing. It's just doody dunking. Hi, Mr. Duty. Good morning, Mr. Duty. How you doing, Mr. Duty? Hello, Mr. Duty. How are you, Mr. Duty? You look wonderful, Mr. Duty. Hey, there's Howdy Doody. Nice day, Mr. Duty. Mr. Peavis basked in the glow of his newfound recognition. But as his doctor, I knew that I had laid a long and difficult adjustment to life after duty plastic. No one can predict whether surgery such as this will be the answer to a person's prayers or merely the prelude to cruel disappointment. I'm a man who knows about disappointment. But just today, I ordered potato salad in a restaurant. It's terrible. It's too much mayonnaise in it. So bland, you know, it's not like in New York. There you get potato salad. Yeah, they didn't even dice the potatoes up in a beat. I hate that. <laughs> Hey, come on, Max. Keep your bottles on the coasters. They leave rings. Oh, they leave rings, do they? Yeah, just because you eat off of a ping pong table. <laughs> come on, Sal, what you deal? I'm shuffling, King Farouk. Some of the others would like a card above seven. Hey, that's beautiful to watch, Sal. Yeah, beautiful <laughs> list, pal. Five card draw. Jack's a better. Yeah. Anybody know what movie the old ladies went to? Eh, it doesn't matter. They're all four bucks a shot, and what is that? Two damn six packs. Hey, I'll tell you one thing. Any movie that's got that Bo Derek in it, I'll pay four oh, bucks to see any. Yeah. Yeah. Man, what I'd like to do with those gazangas. Yeah, I'd drink one hour with Charlie's Angels to have one minute with her, boy. That's just about how long he'd last. One minute. What? <laughs> what? Just because she's a movie star, you don't think we can handle her? Come on, we can handle her. She's just a broad. Yeah, I'd like to handle that little broad down at the photomat shack one night. I mean, she's just all alone in that little house, just asking for it. Oh, I'm still working on the waitress with the mole. The poor thing, she's dying for me. Ah. Well, it's just a matter of time between me and Jake's wife. Yeah? Oh. So it's kind of fumbling around with my tool chest, kind of licking our lips. Know what I mean? <laughs> let's face it, man. Let's, let's, let's face it. They want it, we got it. Yeah, man. right. Who's better than so, anyway? Come on. I'll open so. for a half. That could be wrong. Oh, come on, Barry. Jesus. Yeah. Hello. Is your wife at home? 
Uh, no, she's not. Oh, good. We're whores. <laughs> May we come in and talk to you about our product? <laughs> well, don't forget us all in here. Uh, listen, uh, that wasn't Ralph. With some whores. Yeah, I can use about <laughs> ten men talking to my Oh, look, there's lots of them, and they're all male. Hi, everybody. We're whores. I'm Kate. And I'm Molly. <laughs> Max. Max, how are you? Nice. I'm Sal. Caleb. Barry. Hi, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Why, what's so funny? Well, I, I, I mean, are you, you know, really prostitutes? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, we're actually supposed to say that we're genital engineers, but it makes us feel so <laughs> silly. Now, here are the things we'll do. <laughs> Caleb, Barry, now, follow the dotted line to the prices. <laughs> Well, now, what'll it be? Who wants to do what with whom? You guys gonna have something? Well, I will if everybody else does. Well, me too. I don't want to be the only one. Yeah, what's the matter with you, you chicken? No, I'm not chicken. Well, see, you do it. You're so great. You do it. You do it. You do it. You do it. We can go twosies. Or perhaps the whole bunch of us could go at once. We could just move the coffee table back. <laughs> All of us? In a pile? I don't want to rub up against no leg with hair on it. What if I'm gay? What if I laugh? What if I'm the only one who doesn't laugh? What if I'm gay? I've never done it in front of another guy before. What if I can't do it? What if I'm gay? Ed no knows something's funny with the carpet. Lysol might do the job. Damn! We forgot one thing. What? Our wives are gonna be here any minute. Oh, yeah, our wives! We oh, want wives! Our right? wives, of course. Well, it's perfectly understandable. <laughs> maybe next time. Yeah, 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 yeah maybe next time. Okay. Yes. Well, guys, bye bye. Okay. See you around. All next right, time. Yeah. Okay, let's play some cards. Come on. Yeah. Who's in? I, I don't for a half. All right. I'm in. Come on. 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 Come on.